So just over the other side is the biggest croc that I've ever seen. He will drop underneath the surface and head into where he last saw us. Yep, there we go. This down here is actually an old crocodile nest. So there would have been a big croc sitting around this area. Yeah, two and a half, three meters. Two and a half. Sitting in here for at least two to three months. There we go. Big barrel will eat smaller crocodiles. To attract a female, the males will build these nests. Pretty wild. Nature is absolutely amazing. All right, so we're currently in the Forbes, heading to one of the most wild, remote, and dangerous places here in the top end of Australia, Cape York. And traveling to a place that's pretty remote, you get some of the best fishing here in Australia, and also some of the biggest crocodiles. It's gonna be a pretty wild trip. Today is gonna be a big day of traveling. Tonight, we're gonna launch the boat to see if we can spotlight any crocs. This is not a big boat either. We're gonna be in the river with crocodiles almost two meters bigger than the boat. Then we'll wake up early tomorrow, go for a bit of a mission in the morning, try catch some food. And day three is what I'm really excited for. There's a section of river that's really shallow that holds some of the biggest crocs in this park. Goal is to film some four plus meter crocodiles and we know that they're in here and I reckon we'll be able to do it this trip. But yeah, it's good to be back out here on this land here in Cape York. Let's jump in the Forbes, start heading out there and get this trip started. Any crocs in this creek right here, mate? Yeah, you might get a few smaller ones in here. Uh, maybe the odd big one in the wet season. Let's go to the main river and find a place to set up camp and hopefully some big crocs. Sounds good, buddy. So just over the other side of the bank is the biggest croc that I've ever seen in person. We're estimating this animal to be around 4.6 meters long, which is a monster crocodile. So there was a croc that they caught in this system 15 or 20 years ago. And in that time, it had grown about 50 centimeters, half a meter. So when they get to these big sizes, they're very slow growing creatures. And that 50 centimeters is actually pretty impressive to grow in that time. So this crocodile right here, being of that big size, would be the king in this section of river. Absolutely, he's, he's been in here for a couple of years now. I've seen him a few times. Um, and in the croc world, the bigger you are, the more say you have. So any smaller crocs that come swimming through here, I'd bet money that he would be pursuing after them. Um, biting them on the tail, head biting them, and just chasing these crocs out of there. And he's been here for a few years, no doubt has got a few females in this pool with him that we can't see at the moment, but they could even be up to three metres long. Yeah, two and a half, three metres is what the girls yeah. average out at. And they could still have a crack at someone on the bank as well. So even if you see this big croc right here, doesn't mean you're completely safe. The best saying out there is it's the crocodile you don't see that will get you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, what he's doing is the minimum exposure posture, and that's where they have 2% of their body mass, eyes, ears, and nose, three main sensors above the surface of the water. Now, he's watching us, he knows we're here. So if we went closer to the water, he will drop underneath the surface and head into where he last saw us. They don't give any indication um, that they're gonna attack, and they're very patient animals. They'll wait, wait, wait for hours and hours. So to give yourself the best chance of not being attacked by a crocodile, don't give them an opportunity to. At the moment, he's just watching us in the distance. When they grab you, they don't let go. They'll do a U-turn, take you back into the water and drown you. It's all over within a few seconds of crop attack. But if you have that little bit of a head start on him and get back out of the way, they're not comfortable on the land. Yeah, five meters back at least. That's, yeah. that's a golden rule up here. Use trees, use rocks as barriers between yourself and the water. If they do jump out and you're five meters back, you, you see it coming and you can take off the other way. Yeah. Um, and, and you can definitely outrun a crocodile once it's, once it's up on the bank. been a big first day of travel getting out to the place that we're going to base ourselves we're going to two different camps 
staying two nights in this one. It's a really big water hole that's said to hold really big crocodiles in it. We've got some really cool things planned for tonight. That little three and a half meter tinny, there's crocs in here that are way bigger than that thing, meters bigger than it. But we're gonna be going out there tonight trying to spot a couple. Yeah, we're nearly here. There's actually a crocodile tooth down here. It's only a little one. Um, so it's broken off quite a while ago. There's actually some tissue from the, the gum there as well. Could it have broken off from when it was attacking something? Or yeah, so most likely? they constantly replace their teeth. They go through about 40 to 50 sets of teeth in a lifetime. Yeah. Full set every two years. What size croc would that be from? Two and a half, three meters, maybe. Yeah. Croc that size. Pretty cool. I've never found a wild crocodile tooth. Well, there we go, mate. Yeah, people are going to think it's clean because <laughs> yeah, I, I work with crocs, but... I, I uh, swear, we just found it. <laughs> it was just sitting in the sand and I, it just caught my eye. <laughs> yeah. Leave it be. So we're actually putting our car in between where we're camping so that if any crocs do come up, they at least have to get around there. This croc come up and grabbed the guy. The granny that was camping there, she ran out and she, I think she tackled the croc <laughs> and copped a bite or something. She got the nickname Super Granny. <laughs> but um, Just what we want to hear oh, before <laughs> setting up the swags. Now oh, cool. Hopefully you find some that size tonight. And not hopefully not in camp. Yeah. So we're just backing the boat down into the water at the moment. We'll give you a rundown on the boat that we're actually taking out tonight. Got some little additions on it to be a bit more crockwise out here. So you can see these bars that Brody's welded on the back there. That's so no crocs come up behind when we're sitting still out there. Let's go. That's a little freshy. Is that a little freshy? That's a little freshy. Are you kidding me? So we got a little salty right here. And just up there in that little pool is a freshy. That's so cool. To see them coexisting. So this is a great example here of the, the hierarchical structure in a crocodile's world. So the smaller crocodiles get pushed to the less favorable areas regardless of the species it's all size based. So the bigger crocs they get the best um, basking spots, the deeper section of the river, the best nesting habitat if you're a female, the best feeding opportunities and the smaller crocodiles will get pushed out to the shallower sections, uh, the, the worst basking spots and whatnot. Um, and that's what we're seeing right here, a salty and a freshie together. Now you might notice when we're eye shining the crocodiles, the eyes actually reflect back at us. Now they have a tapetum lucidium, which is a crystalline structure at the back of the eye. So what that does is when light comes through the eye, it passes through the cones, rods, photoreceptors, hits that tapetum lucidium and actually bounces that light back through the eye so they get to absorb as much light as possible and it makes them see very, very well in low light conditions. Um, so they're primarily nocturnal animals. So most of these crocodiles at the moment, they're out and about, um, they're quite active, they're up on the banks, they might be looking in the shallows here for little fish or crustaceans and whatnot. So it's really cool to see. So tonight we've mainly seen smaller crocodiles, but it doesn't mean that there's not big crocs in here. Trust me when I say over the next few days, we're gonna be seeing some really big crocodiles. Some of the biggest here in Australia, and I'm really keen to film it. I reckon we're gonna call it a night, and yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Go for a fish, try to catch some breakfast. So it's day two at the moment. What we're doing is we're just walking up this bank, going for a fish early this morning, trying to catch some breakfast, hopefully big barramundi. They do live in here. Oh.
freshies would probably nest in this. They'd be, they'd be thinking about doing it. So this is probably the night before. It's come up. You can see the belly scales down here. So a freshwater crocodile, they're testing for a good place to build their nest. Yeah, so freshies are hole nesters. They don't build a big mound like a salty. They dig a little hole in the sand and they lay about 10, 20 eggs. And how many little freshies survive until adulthood? Well, out of 10 or 20 eggs, most eggs don't hatch. Dingo predation is quite high. You can imagine a nest like this, like there's literally goanna tracks around it right there. Yeah. Um, they would dig up the eggs and eat them. There was one study where they looked at the impact on cane toads and freshies and because freshies took quite a hit when cane toads first come through the top end because they're toxic and it kills the crocodile and it dropped their numbers right back but it also dropped the goanna numbers back so a, a lot of the yeah, right. the eggs were actually hatching out because goannas weren't eating them and they they've they've popped back up quite quick population wise yeah but um yeah this is really cool like i was only just talking about it before so just over there in the middle of this pool, we're walking up this little dried up creek bed, going for a fish, trying to catch brekkie, and there's a little freshwater crocodile. Now he'd be up in here taking cover from the big salties that are back out there in the river, but this will eventually dry up later on in the season, so he'll have to make his way back out towards the main system. The sun's coming up higher at the moment. When it gets a little bit more up there, we're gonna head out in the boat and see if we can find the crocs sunning themselves on the banks. These are cold-blooded creatures, so they need heat to warm up for the day. But yeah, take a look at that. Yep, there we go. Yes. Just a little fella. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. So that is the fish that we were after. Obviously a little bit bigger than this one, but still so cool to come out here into Cape York and catch these fish. There should be more in here. There should be more bigger bar in here. There we go. Well, there's something on. Oh, I think it's, I reckon it's got me, oh, it's got me around something. There we go. Oh, a tarp on. Big tarp on. I knew there had to be something sitting down in that snag right there. I was hoping it was gonna be a big barra but just a little tarp on. We're gonna get it back in the water. Hopefully get something that we can eat. <coughs> there we go. Oh. So we've definitely had to work for him today, but hopefully we can oh, get I one. I just had a hook up then too. Really? <laughs> We're trying to get a legal one. And I think we've just found a school in this snag right here. We're just walking up and down the banks. But yeah, the cool thing is Big Barra will eat smaller crocodiles. The smaller crocs that we saw last night, they're hanging up on the bank, hiding from the bigger crocs and bigger Barra because these Barra get over a meter long. And then obviously the bigger crocs will eat any size Barra as well. But take a look at that. Beautiful Australian sports fish. We're gonna get him back in the water just over here, away from this snag. We'll see if we can get a legal one. This down here is actually an old crocodile nest from last season yep. up here in Cape York. And you can see there's a bunch of eggshells that these baby crocs would have hatched out of. Now, anywhere from the months November to March is wet season. So the water levels will rise right up and a big female would have come up here from the river that's further down that way, scratched up a bunch of vegetation, 
made the nest and laid our eggs in it and she'd be guarding this nest. Oh yeah, so anything that would have come near this nest, a pig or goanna trying to raid the eggs, she would have charged out, tried to grab it, scare it off. These eggs here, I, I dare say, were probably hatched out because I can see a bit of an egg trail that leads down that wallow. So um, yeah, some little guys are lurking in there somewhere. And tonight we're gonna go out in the tinny and hopefully find a couple little ones and maybe some bigger crocs. I'm hoping to see a big one. This trip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is where she would have been returning to the river. They actually uh, excavate these wallows. So they fill with water and she can stay nice and cool and she can guard that nest. See, there's old eggs right, right beside Oh yeah. There. So there would have been a big croc sitting around this area. Yeah, two and a half, three meters. Two and a half. Sitting in here for at least two to three months. So about 80 to 90 days is the incubation time. Take a look at this right here. Believe it or not, this little structure that we found right here was actually built by a bird. This is absolutely crazy, the bower bird. They're an awesome species. Look at what this animal's collected. I'll just come around the side. To attract a female, the males will build these nests. And this guy has been collecting some clamshells, a bit of tin foil, bottle caps, lots of white things, a few rocks in there. The bower birds back home where I live, down south, they'll collect blue things. So bottle caps, pegs off your clothesline, anything blue that they find, they'll bring it here, try to attract a female. Looking at this right here, it is so crazy that a bird has built this with just its beak, collecting sticks and forming this structure. Yeah, pretty wild. Nature is absolutely amazing. And when you come out into the bush, come out into places like this and spend time out here on this land, this is the stuff that you find. Bowerbird nest, we're gonna keep going. Sun's just setting at the moment. We're in croc country. It feels cool, it feels really good to be here. In this pool in particular, Steve Irwin back in the day used to catch and relocate crocodiles from this area. There could even be the same crocodiles that he's caught still in this big section of river, which is pretty cool. But yeah, we're gonna wait till it gets dark, launch the boat and see if we can find any. Just across this river, we've spotted a big crocodile. Looks to be over four meters long. This is a monster croc. Big, big rot. Be careful, eh, because he could charge up. Oh, yeah. What's the biggest crocodile that's ever been caught? Well, I think he was caught because, yeah, a few villagers were going missing. By the time his brain registered, that's a croc head. It was too late. So he stabbed it right in the jaw, which is the neck of the croc. Another big crocodile. He's just as big as the last one. Probably about four and a bit meters long. Yeah, yes. Illegal. Cape that's York nice Barra. One out in this little swamp as well. Yeah, he's dinner, this guy. Yeah. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. How what? many crocs we seen all up on this trip? Probably looking at about 55, 60 crocs. Yeah. And we've still got a bit of way to go. That's crazy. Yeah. 